Hi, I'm Kerry Gismore. And I'm Steve Oakley. Okay, Resolve Workflow. Let's talk about this. All I know is I'm in Final Cut or I'm in Premiere Pro. I've got my, I'm in my NLE. I've got my edit done. I know I need to get it over to Resolve to do the color grade. How do I do that? Good question. You have lots of good questions, don't you? <laughs> Resolve is this tool, it's, we can say decades old. Very few applications have that kind of depth of development to that. Decades? Decades. 25 years old from its starting point. But it wasn't called Resolve then? It was just DaVinci. Okay. They started out on tape. They developed tape import directly into the application. Of course, you can send back out to tape directly in Resolve. Okay, yeah. you're scaring me because as much as I live tape, this is the modern era. I don't do tape much anymore, really at all. It's scary me. I know my show is done. I'm in Final Cut. My media is on the drives. So what do I do? Okay. There are two. You want the two simple ways, right? I'll take two simple ways. Okay. One is we can do a solid QuickTime movie. Now, like self-contained. Yeah, it's just a complete solid. Everything's quick time baked movie. in. Yep. Oh, Everything's okay. baked in. And with that, what you're going to have to do once you got it in Resolve is cut it back up into its individual clips, which you can do because it's basically got an NLE inside of it. And you can put the dissolves back in place and you're all good. The other way that you probably want to do okay. is XML, Final Cut XML, and you'll get the individual clips live. So you export from your NLE, read the FCP XML into Resolve, and all your clips are live on a timeline, just like they were in your editor. That sounds more appealing to me. I'd love to keep my clips live. I'd love to link to the original media I've already been working with. But you said Final Cut XML. What if I'm cutting in Premiere? Premiere supports Final Cut XML export. Oh, that's right. It does call it Final yeah. Cut XML on the export, doesn't it? OK. And if you happen to be in an editor that doesn't, then you have to make solid quick times. Now Resolve does have a feature, a reconform feature, that if you've got a solid quick time, you can take an EDL. You ever use one of those? Back in the day. Yeah, and reconform the cut. Why would anybody want to do that? I mean, when you can get XML and have individual live clips and treat everything individually, why would anybody want a self-contained solid QuickTime? Be, well, the answer is simple. Your editor took all your money and went to Rio with it. <laughs> and all you have is a QuickTime movie, a ProRes movie, I hope. Yeah, you'd hope at least you know it's high quality. Right, or maybe you just happen to have actually have like a tape master. And you gotta load Whoa. it in. The great thing is Resolve has the tools to do it. You're not stuck. Okay. You've got multiple ways of getting the job but you, done. But what if you didn't have an EDL to tell you where the edits were? Then you can go into the timeline. You can go cut, cut, cut. That's assuming they're dissolves, and put the dissolves in so that you. Wait, how are you dissolving a, a clip that's that's a self-contained clip with everything baked in? You're literally the dissolves are baked in. Right. What you do is you cut the dissolve in half in your baked clip, and you dissolve the same shot to the same shot. Oh, so you're dissolving the grades. Right. The two uh, clips, to, okay. they dissolve together. Now, a cool thing Resolve has, if you're mostly cut-based, it can actually go in there and auto-detect the cuts, and it's actually pretty quick. So if you're cut... It's got, like, scene detection. Right. It's got scene detection. So if you have a very cut-based QuickTime clip, let it go. Come back in a few minutes depending on how long it is, and you're done. Most of your dirty work's done. Nice. What about graphics? I mean, the graphics are already the color I want them to be. I don't want to grade my graphics. Okay, well, let's look at our two different basic workflows. If you've got XML, now, you're a good editor, right? I like to think so. <laughs> I've heard you are. I have you heard you are. Okay. You organize your timeline, I, I hope, you. yes. Yeah. Reasonably. Okay. I, I think I've, I've seen worse. So you stick most of your graphics into two or three tracks up towards the top? Yeah, generally graphics okay. go over video. Usually. Depends on what you're editing. Okay. For the most part, you've got all your graphics stuck in those top tracks. In Resolve, you can just turn the tracks off and they're gone. Now you might sit there and say, but what if I had a couple clips here and then a couple underneath and I had this clip dissolve over some graphics? Right? You can ask uh, that. Okay. All you do is disable that clip and resolve. You just shut it off. So I'm in resolve and I'm grading clean video. 
and and I'm not really worried about my grabs. Ideally, so if they came across. I'm I'm yeah. I, I'm I've turned them off, and I'm not going to deal with them right now. I just want to grade clean video right now. So, and I spend as much time as I want making my grades absolutely perfect on my whole show. But I'm in resolve. At some point, I've got to get that back out, get it back to my NLE for mastering or further finishing or whatever. How's that work? Hmm. Well, I thought you were going to have put tape directly, but... <laughs> we have a no tape rule here now. Actually, that's not exactly true. Certain networks still want tape, but for the most part... Well, figure that you're going back to the NLE because you've still got some other stuff like slating and mixes and whatever. Yeah. Two ways to do it, as always, at least. You can export a solid QuickTime movie again, and that may be fine. You just slug it back in in your NLE on one track. All your graphics are on top and you're done. You can also do individual clips. Resolve takes every clip that was in its timeline, creates a new one with all your grading work, and gives you a Final Cut XML. What Resolve's doing is it's taking all the color correction adjustments I've made and it's baking new media with those color corrections applied. Right, you've got a full new set of media. Okay, and then the option is for it to bake your whole show into one quick time or do individual clips and then XML that to Final Cut no, or, or Premiere or whatever. But that XML is going to link to those that new rendered media, not the original media at this Correct. point. Correct, it's linking to the rendered media. Okay, but can I have handles? What if I have to you do You keep tweets? saying but. You're like a producer. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm not going to get burned here. I mean, what if I still find myself needing to tweak and yeah, add? Yeah, you can add handles. As long as the media exists in the original clips, you can add handles. Another on. reason to keep your stuff as clip-based as opposed to flat. Ideally. Time. Ideally. So you can tweak those edits. Because I'd sure hate to do another round trip back to Resolve and render everything all over again just to get three frames and added to And i got to stick this in just so we make everybody happy. Yes, it supports ProRes in and out. So you can take QuickTime clips in, ProRes, input, output. It also supports DPX and a couple flavors of uncompressed. So it's not a million codecs. It's, I would say, the ones that really count, the ones that you're most likely to use every day. So now I got a question for you. Did okay. you read the manual? Some of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's your test. All right. What does it support for input? Um, the best way to say that is Resolve supports quite a few codecs on, on display and viewing and grading as source media. Um, perhaps not quite as many as m modern Pro -res. NLEs. ProRes is in there. DNX HD. Yeah, that's in there. No longer a paid module, by the way. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. Save $500. Yeah, <laughs> if you're coming from Abbott. Yep, absolutely. DPX? Sure, sure. What um, about EOS clips, Canon? Natively. Canon H.264 EOS clips natively. But there's some other codecs that it might struggle with, like AVC intro or something. But I just find that, you know, as someone who just needs to get work done today, I need to get that footage into a codec that it does read, like ProRes is usually the one I go for. Right, so in other words, you converted the ProRes first in the editing process, and then when you sent it over... Yeah, yeah, you have to anticipate this one. Yeah. yeah. So test your workflows with a small project before you A couple clips. Yeah. Yeah, that's Absolutely. probably pretty smart to do no matter what you're doing because if you're just starting out with Resolve, doing a couple little test projects, a couple of clips, a couple of edits, send it back and forth and learn it before you commit to doing that 300 shots and three minute music video. <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to test this stuff when the clients aren't in the room. But you know what? That's why they're watching us. <laughs> so. You've told me you've done some really great stuff with Resolve, right? Yeah, I have. Show me. Come on, let's go. I'm, I'm dying to well, go here. Well, wait a minute. Before you can work in Resolve, you've got to build your system. Damn, you're right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Setting up Resolve next. See you then. Join us in our next episode where we get into setting up a Resolve system and what machines will run it. We'll talk about GPU acceleration, CUDA versus OpenCL, Red Rocket, laptops, iMacs, and Resolve Lite, a free version. We'd like to thank Blackmagic Design, makers of DaVinci Resolve, for underwriting some of the costs of this episode. Check out the full range of Blackmagic Design products at their website, blackmagic-design.com. Transparency is important to us. While we have accepted underwriting support, our underwriters do not have any editorial control. We are expressing our own opinions and points of view. We want you, the viewers, to factor this as you view this content.